Well, hello there and welcome to this edition of my EV Revolution show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host, and today I've got a lot more time here with a 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning. Uh, really stoked to be able to have this vehicle for a, a longer amount of time than I usually get press vehicles for. So first I want to thank Ford Canada for allowing me the use of this vehicle for not one but two weeks. So I've been able to really run it through my normal everyday operations of going to work and, and errands and that kind of stuff, plus taking a long road trip in it as well. So I've been fortunate to use that. So what I'm going to do for this episode is something a little bit different. I'm going to incorporate uh, the review episode that I did initially on this, the first look episode, which I did, I think, last October, which is where I only had the use of an F-150 Lightning for a couple of hours. Uh, so I did a walk around, I did an inside tour, I did a quick drive, I gave you all my thoughts, I ran through some numbers and that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna insert that part of the episode now so I don't have to redo the whole thing because nothing's changed from, from that perspective. This is still the same specs. So I'm gonna insert that next 20 minutes or so from that episode here. If you've seen it or don't want to re-watch that stuff, uh, you can skip forward then to where I put in some of the new content near the tail end of this. I do uh, some charging, do some fast charging, so that's new, and uh, give you my thoughts at a wrap up as well. Uh, you can skip ahead to that. Talk about why Ford has done such an excellent job on this truck. They really, really have, you know, and I have such a different perspective of it. I already liked it from before for my quick just drive, but I actually really, really love it now. And I'm going to tell you a bit more in the wrap up segment on this episode. So stay tuned, start watching that part. You'll get all your details, specs, some impressions, and I'll come back with a wrap up and some more info. All right, so we, we start off with the design of the F-150 Lightning. Well, there's really not much to talk about because it is an F-150 product, right? There's no redesign, really. Some small elements like some lighting and some treatments. You know, we have our charging ports and this kind of thing. But for all intents and purposes, it's taking the same platform that we see today come out for the F-150 and electrifying it. But though doing it in a very well engineered and well thought out manner, right? So you still have that nice low center of gravity and, and that's why, you know, when Carlos mentioned about customers experiencing the, these and seeing the difference on how this will handle, not only from a throttle and from acceleration, but from an overall handling capability, they are blown away by the capabilities of electrified pickup trucks. And the F-150 is no exception to that. So design language is gonna be very similar, right? It's got the boxy, it's got your quad cab for a comfortable space for five people. It's got a good sized bed with the tailgate. You can put your four by eight sheets in. Lots of working environments, of course. Carlo, uh, Carlos mentioned the front, which I'll show you in a sec, and of course the tail. So a lot of different areas that from a, uh, um, for users that need these as workspaces. Uh, their daily work is working in a construction or home building or whatever that case is. These offer a ton of flexibility and capabilities, as you know, especially with the, with the 9.7, I think it is, or the 9 plus kilowatt hour uh, vehicle to load technology uh, that you, ha you can access through the front or the back through different connections. So design wise, really not much more to spend on. It's a truck, it looks like a truck um, uh, and, and goes like a truck only in a better way because it's all electric. Now, before I get into the interior, let's look at the, both the front and the trunk elements or the be pickup bed in this case. So you can open the front in, in, from the inside, of course, through the control panel or through the key fob. Uh, if I can read this right, I press it twice and it should let me open it up. So here we go, we got our beeping and it's a full power trunk, as you can see, that opens up. And, you know, again, as I said with Carlos, Ford was the first to think about this, right? To not not block this off with a fake grill, keep it, keep it static, and just open the top like Rivian does. Again, I'm not bashing the Rivian, I'm just saying that that is a difference that I think Rivian missed the boat out on them. They really should have thought about that because you have it's all that little bit more useful space in the element that you don't have to lift stuff up and over. So if you're working a construction site and you're throwing in bags of asphalt or concrete or whatever, um, you know, drywall materials, right? Uh, all that kind of stuff, barrels or whatever, you know, it's a good size element and I'll put the numbers here for what the cargo space is on the front. But that simple engineering, that simple take of just making this part open as well and being able to lift and unload um, loads into this much easier, especially when you do it for a living. I tell you folks, if you ever have to load and unload stuff consistently, backs, arms, right? So a little thing like this makes a big difference, but it's just something to highlight. So you've got tie-down hooks, 
got a nice element here. It's fairly deep. It's uh, probably about uh, four or five inches deep where you can put charging cables and some odds and ends here. Uh, you've got a nice floor. You can take these off and clean them. Of course, you have access to your 12 volt and stuff back here, some hooks. Of course, you have your plugs here. Uh, so you have a bunch of 110 plugs and a 240 plug, my understanding here, or 220, like if you wanted to plug in a, a portable welding unit. And again, using this as a workspace, right? Something different that you that people may, would not have been able to think of before in an internal combustion engine because you don't have that. So being able to do a lot of stuff here uh, is really, really nice. Big trunk. Hey, tailgate parties, right? Put a George Foreman grill up here or, uh, you know, a big cup of coolers of ice and off you go to the races. Keep, uh, um, you know, production of your jello shooters and you're there, man, I'll tell you. But, you know, I'm really just stoked about that. And of course, it's got lots of lights and then press the button twice, give me the nice beep and then off it goes. So nice and smooth. And we'll lock down and protect the contents in there because it's all lockable and sealable. All right, so getting access to the rear bed's pretty easy as well. You can do this through the key fob, press the button twice, and the tailgate's actually automatic and will fold down as I get out of the way here. So you can see that folding down in a nice manner and unlocks it. So pretty cool. Again, lots of workspace. I mean, you have measurements here because Ford knows their customers, right? They know what they want. And this, as Carlos said, is an F-150 pickup truck. They haven't changed the usability of this. In fact, they've added more use cases and a better usability for this truck by being electric. And of course, we can unlock this if we want to step in. That folds down. We have our step to get in there and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, these are built to be used. These are built for work environments. Put that back here. And then I'm not going to release the tonneau cover because it's on there very nicely, but it's a good sized bed, all lined, all protected. So you can throw your stuff in there. And, and if you wanted to put more accessories and stuff, you can. And as Carlos mentioned, pretty well, all the accessories that are available for the internal combustion F-150 pickup trucks are available for the electrified ones. So if you have a, a you know roof rack or something going on, pretty high chance you'll be able to swap it from an existing to a new vehicle or purchase it just like you would for internal combustion. So great going forward. And then when you want to get this out of the way and your hands are full, you forgot to maybe close it, push that key fob a couple of times and off it goes to the races um, to close it up and uh, simplify that operation. Quick backup cameras, all that kind of stuff. And you can manually release things too here. So you've got that capability. Um, but again, just make, make life easier. It's not as complicated. Um, uh, as the GM offering is going to be in the Silverado with their tailgates, but it gets the job done. And uh, again, good use of space here. All right, so as we discussed, um, there are a couple versions of the battery pack here uh, for this uh, machine. This is an all-wheel drive, dual motor setup, one on each axle. axle. Uh, two battery pack options. You have a 98 kilowatt hour or 131 kilowatt hour battery pack, giving ranges uh, from 230 miles or 370 kilometers to 299 miles or about 480 kilometers range. Carlos is saying he's seeing over 490 in the summertime with this. So really good range numbers on that extended battery pack that Ford calls it. As I mentioned, that power goes to two motors creates a really good amount of horsepower and torque because that's what you need from these vehicles. You need to be able to carry payloads, pull trailers, pull weights with these and towing capacities, and of course, move people and stuff around. So all those two motors and all that power combined to give you 426 horsepower and 775 pound-feet of torque. Now, from a charging perspective, it has two charging ports in this vehicle. Just pop it open here. And here we go. We have our standard J1772 and then our CCS uh, of course, for fast charging adapters. I'll put the numbers up here of what the AC and the fast charging rates are because I just can't remember them at this moment while I'm filming, but I'll put them up on the screen here. Again, fairly simple. It's got a light here, unlock, charging, all that kind of stuff. Now, one element uh, I always show you guys is trying to get into the rear seat. Well, on something like this, I really shouldn't have any problem getting in here. If I do, then I'm getting too old. But as you can see, it's a cavernous door open. Uh, opens almost 90 degrees perpendicular to the vehicle. Uh, got a nice uh, step here. Grab bar. Boom. You're in. How much easier can that be for a bigger guy like me? Gotta love the space. So, as I mentioned, lots of space. Easy to get in and out have those grab bars, have the, the running boards here to help your steps down. Everything is really nice, gotta love it. 
Right, if we just give you a quick look at the uh, interior here, again, if you're familiar with an F-150 pickup truck, there's really not gonna be much differentiating this. And as we said off the top, that is a bonus for buyers because what Ford didn't want to do is get their buyers to think, oh, I gotta relearn everything, I don't know where anything is, all that kind of stuff. You know, I've, there's lots of things that I have to do. And that's not the case with the uh, F-150. Everything is in its familiar space. This is the platinum version, so obviously it has updated seats and more, Nick's, you know, more power set settings more luxurious settings and that's one of the higher end or not uh, i think it is the highest end trim model that you can get with some options on that you can go down to a middle level and then your base level with uh, with more like a work truck you know base work truck environment but very nicely outquitted you know uh, equipped outfitted let me just get in here so let me put this on here all right get in here and show you everything so I won't go through all the menuing system on the displays, but simply everything is where people are expecting it to be with a nice size uh, binnacle, driver's binnacle cluster, lots of wheel controls for different elements, right? But including your cruise controls, your distance, your lane keeping, uh, main menus, all that kind of stuff that you can, um, uh, that you can do. Uh, so that's that. Now, of course, this is no stranger because we've seen this on the Mach-E, but the big um, portrait uh, display that's here that gives you all kinds of functionality to what you want to do. You can put Apple CarPlay, all that kind of stuff home. I do like this volume button. I, st I still kind of like having just a manual button that's for volume because that's probably one thing that um, we, we go to a lot, but you know, a lot of different things. Of course, you got your drive modes uh, and off-road and stuff. You can uh, do additional settings on here as well if you want to raise the height. You have your camera, so there's lots of different ways to, to look at cameras here. And of course, parking assist, and I can uh, zoom in and look at some of the different angles if, if I'm trying to get into a spot. Um, certainly good for people that aren't familiar with um, you know pickup trucks and and of course they're big units so being able to to look around and then you have your backup camera here nice nice uh, back actually that's a front view camera that one because I'm not in reverse so we can get out of the camera mode what else we got going on so different ways of accessing the unlocking the charge ports charge port light all that kind of stuff opening opening the front uh, things like that if you're towing you can do the uh, things to set up for for adding for uh, having a trailer on board and the smart hitch setup if you have that option and if you as you backing in it will help you um, be able to center that the onboard scales is a cool feature there's actually a, 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 a led element set in the back here but basically once you've loaded this vehicle up it, it'll give you a weight a rating of uh, how much payload you've put into the bed which i think is a cool feature for those that are moving a lot of stuff and don't want to overload the vehicle a nice to have different lighting elements around the zones uh, of course you can you can play with all that stuff so lots of different things that you can do here um, uh, the pro power on board is cool again it tells you that uh, that uh, how you how much you have in reserve you can set up some limits here as far as how much reserve you want to keep so you don't drain your battery by doing all that all that kind of stuff and that's a big element that power vehicle to grid vehicle to load technologies you have parking assistance uh, which i'm not going to have any time to play with today and intelligent backup power as well this is where you have the ford charge station pro mixed in with the uh, in-home inverters and equipment so that if you uh, have all this set up and your truck is plugged in and you get a blackout um, it will uh, the house will automatically switch its power source from its current grid over to the the f-150 and will keep you going it could be three four five six days depending on your power loads so again really really nice and we're seeing all the, the oems that are bringing pickup trucks now to that lots of seat settings here because this is a higher end uh, uh, trim package in the platinum so platinum so i've got massage and stuff like that and then valley mode so you don't want anybody driving uh, mount uh, kilimanjaro in this thing so you can limit them so pretty easy controls and easy menuing systems to set up all that kind of stuff um, then you have of course your hvac which is only always nice in here i like that there are some physical buttons for different attributes for trailering We've got some 12 volts as here as well here and you have a computer plug which is nice because this does offer the 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 ability to um if i push that button here to use this as a workspace let me just get to that so see how the transmission folds down and then i believe i have to remember how to do this 
lots of cubby space here. I believe that I have to slide this down like that. There we go. So there's your workspace. Just like that, I've converted the center console into a workspace. I have a power plug if I need to put a laptop in. Again, so many people are using, utilizing their pickup truck as their remote office, right? As their workspace. So, you know, things like this that Ford has offered, they continue to bring in into the electrified version and just make it easier and better. So well done for them. Lots of storage space here, lots of cup holders, all that kind of stuff. I need that transmission. I need to get going soon again. Push that button oh, and off it. Did I stop it? Let me do that again. Push that button and off it comes and for your normal shifter. Again, so everything's familiar. Got a charging mat, uh, some USB-A and, and uh, C plugs. Lots of space, uh, lots of cubbies in the door pockets. Uh, grab handles here for getting in and out. Uh, again, sunglass holders, big mirrors big mirrors and a nice panoramic sunroof that I believe has a roller shade that will let you close that. Yeah, there it is. If I can find that. Oh, that's a rear shade. Okay. I'm doing the rear shade. That's the rear window. So you can open that rear window back there. Um, and, but I'm sure that there is a roller shade here. You just have to figure out how to turn it on because there's so many buttons, so little time. So really, really nice front. Now let's take a look at the back seat. All right, so the rear seat again, lots of uh, similar items that you will know if you're a pickup truck owner and user. Uh, big, big bench uh, back seat here. Obviously, three people in comfort. Even the middle is not going to be squished. Okay, we love seeing flat floors. This has a nice big flat floor. Of course, I believe there's some underfloor storage here as well that you can get access to. You can fold up the seat and get access to that. So lots of nooks and crannies for storage. Let me just climb in here. Uh, you know, standard map pockets. Got some HVAC venting controls with heated seats. The outboard seats in the back here are heated. Again, big cup holders for some of those. Um, this is the Platinum package, so the seats have the badging, some nice upgraded leather. Pull down the center armrest, arm and we have some leftover stuff here, <laughs> which I'm not gonna use, though some lip balm and a mask from somebody else, but hey, that's good for, uh, for them. Uh, again, lots of uh, storage, nooks and crannies. This has a really nice stereo system, my understanding. Um, so it's a very comfortable, lots of leg room here. Very comfortable environment to be in. Uh, high ceilings, of course. I've got a fist or more of headroom and I'm about 5'7 here. And that's with this panoramic roof. So you got no problems for, with um, sitting back here. Very comfortable and being belted in. So uh, good job uh, on the uh, inside. All right, so as I've poked and prodded uh, the F-150 here and gave you all the details, now let me go take it for a drive. All right, so here in the driving the F-150 Lightning, and uh, I don't have a lot of experience with pickup trucks, so you know, only when you rent and move stuff, um, never really owned one. Um, I used to drive one when I was in high school quite a lot, uh, but it was a, it was just a single row one, older GMC product. So. So my first impressions, obviously, the seats are really comfortable, by the way. I've been, you know, there's no lack of adjustments to find a perfect seat. Um, always takes me a bit of a time to kind of settle into a seat. Nice and comfortable, uh, very padded, uh, very supportive. Uh, but from a driving perspective, let me give you my first thoughts. I mean, this is quiet. So um, as you saw when I took um, some B-roll of the tires, these do have smaller tires on them. They've uh, swapped them over to the winters now. So they're going to be slightly louder than the all seasons would have been. That's just the nature of winter tires. And they're slightly smaller, so they'll, they'll, roll, they'll spin a little more, obviously, because the circum circumference is down a bit. But I, that's not coming through to me. Um, this is an extremely quiet cabin for the size of the cabin that it is, right? And for the platform that it is being a pickup truck. Um, Ford has done a great job at quieting the road, quieting the, the, the sounds that you hear coming from the tires and from the road, and, um, and the wind noise, of course. We have just a slight breeze blowing here today, very, very slight as, as this fog is slowly starting to lift. Um, so I'm going to, let me see here, I'm going to go uh, probably up uh, north a little bit of the city here, uh, and just try to get a little bit of speed element into this. Uh, where I can and do some stop and go as well. So let me, um, let me make the left turn here and then go a little bit of distance. So now let me see if I can get into the driver settings here because I wanted to see if this has um, a one pedal driving. Oh, there, I think it's going to be down there. 
There we go, additional settings. Let me see. So one pedal drive. Oops, I just had it and then it went away. So I want to engage one pedal drive. Okay. So I've got one pedal drive engaged now, which is just a simple selection on the menu, really easy to find. I've let my foot off the brake, and that means that the um, typically with one pedal drives, you'll see an icon, you'll see that the, the car will hold itself, and then use the accelerator, of course, to, uh, to accelerate, and then as you feather the accelerator back and forth uh, for both moving forward and for braking, uh, it will use a combination of regenerative braking and uh, the physical braking to slow and stop the vehicle. And uh, I can tell you folks that most EV drivers, owners, once they uh, that have a vehicle that supports full one pedal drive, because there's a few there which don't go all the way with it, they go almost all the way, but not all the way, um, you tend to learn it relatively quickly, how, the, uh, how that uh, feathering and how the touch is on the accelerator and how to time your slowdowns and things like that. Sure, there are times where you're gonna have to jam on the brakes, there's no question, but once you learn the one pedal driving system, it's really easy and it just becomes intuitive. Uh, I, you know, I'll, I'll relate this. I've been driving now EVs with one pedal for four years. So for me, it's just easy to get in, a, in any EV and kind of learn that, take a couple minutes to learn it. And I, I reference that too, when I learned to drive a standard automobile, once I was able to learn the, the, the clutch and the shifting and get comfortable with that, I could go into any standard automobile and just, but with a couple of shifts, be confident in my ability to drive that vehicle. Just knowing where the release point was on the clutch, where the engagement point was on the clutch, uh, what you know, how far you had to do it, all that kind of stuff. Understanding the revs of the car, and then going by sound and feel, and just changing by you know shifting gears that way. Well, it's very similar to one pedal driving and some of the EV aids that we have. So I came to a stop here. I did not touch the brakes at all. I just let off the accelerator. It was a nice smooth stop and, and once I get closer to where I wanted to stop it is let off a little more and the car brought itself to a complete halt and of course engaged the physical brakes. Now so I'm not going to be talking about range or efficiencies because I don't have the car that long and we are getting into again the colder climates now we're getting into we had some snow a little bit of snow on the ground that's why we had some fog because we've had some warmer temperatures it's currently four degrees celsius so we are going to see a tw you know a 20 to 30 percent rage drop quite easily over the winter time and and this is going to suffer from no less but you know at about 370 380 uh, kilometers on a full charge today being cool that's pretty good again that i could go to downtown toronto and back and still have a hundred kilometers, if not 150 kilometers left over. So there's a lot of range that's available on these, uh, even in the winter time on these electric pickup trucks. I believe this is the extended range model because he can, he told me he could get up to 490. So this will have the 131 kilowatt hour battery pack in it. But you know, for my driving, I'm driving down here, this main street, it's got some bumps. Um, boy, the suspension is just eating these bumps up like there's nothing. Very, very um, little, little uh, impact to myself as the driver or if there are passengers. I kind of I do a Tim Hortons test where I'll get a coffee and then I'll kind of hold it here and I'll see, you know, if, if I have, can keep my elbow rested on the console without it, without the coffee air ending up on me or, uh, or not. And, or I have to lift my arm and kind of use that for balance. And I know in my Tesla, I have to lift my arm because the suspension, even with the change, uh, is still harsher than I'd like it to be. Well, this would probably fare pretty well on that coffee test because the suspension is absorbing the bumps. And that's one of the things, of course, um, that people are, are realizing with the electrified F-150 is that it has that independent rear suspension. And it's going to eliminate, A, it's going to help the road mannerisms more in combination with the low center of gravity and that big battery pack in the middle here that I'm sitting on. It's really going to add to a much better vehicle driving dynamics, especially for a pickup truck. And then if people that are used to pickup trucks that don't have rear and advanced suspensions, most of them that I'm aware of, are used to the bed hopping that you can get sometimes going over bumps or maybe taking a bit of a turn and that kind of stuff. And, and just, you could feel it. Well, you won't get that with this because of that independent suspension. It will absorb it and keep the bed grounded as well. Uh, on that, even without a load. So very, very nice. Um, boy, this has been a comfortable drive. It's only been 10 minutes now, if I look at my counter, uh, but this has been a really, really comfortable drive. Bit of a, a, a thicker A-pillar here I'm noticing as I'm getting in, so I kind of maybe have to look a little this way, a little this way, kind of look around the A-pillar. But again, that's part of the structural integrity of, of pickup trucks, right? They, they are pretty strong, so you need those, those thick pillars here. Um, so, uh, you know, 
it's not a big deal. It's like anything, you get used to it, you get used to your visibility and to your, uh, your, your blind spots and things like that. Um, there really isn't much of a blind spot on here um, from just a general sense, because um, I can see to the side that big second back window, which is low, uh, is very nice. I like, I like having these low windows because A, it helps with you in seeing the rear mirror, and then also on sideways visibility, especially for the, uh, the rear. Uh, obviously, since it has a bed, I won't be able to say all, all that way back there, but the nice uh, rear mirrors, and then I'm, of course, I'm pretty sure that this has, yes, it does, it has blind spot assist, uh, and all that kind of stuff so they'll get a light in your in your mirror when somebody comes up beside you and they're in your blind spot um, so let me give this a little bit of acceleration here so yeah we love that EV torque I can't go too fast here I'm still in the city area but nice steady easy torque um, I'm in normal driving mode so I'm not in any of the spirited driving modes here um, but very very nice um, our fog is lifting I see because I can see a little farther from me so I'm not sure how the ADAS is going to engage in the fog but I am going to try in a sec Again, nice clean dash. I'm able to see when it's regenerating, when energy is going back into the uh, into the battery pack as I'm slowing down. The one pedal driving is very, very nice. I think it's a very well balanced of the ability to um, to let off and get that slower slowdown. If you want a more immediate, a quicker slowdown, you let off a little more, you'll get it. It's a, it's a really, and then it's got some resistance to the pedal so that um, you've got the ability to kind of really micro play with that pedal and fine tune your, uh, your acceleration and deceleration while in uh, one pedal mode. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, now, let me see about um, putting the cruise on here and engaging some of these settings. Uh, let's see, we got our lanes here. I'm gonna make that the biggest. And then do I have lane keeping? I'm gonna put lane keeping on. So lane keeping's on, cruise is on. Adaptive spacing is on, and then I've got my spacing. So let's see, is it going to stay in the lane here? Nope, won't stay in the lane there. <laughs> All right, let me disengage it first. All right, so I've got uh, now the ADAS system going. Um, it's keeping in the lane. It's keeping the space in front of me. I've set a speed limit, um, and it is uh, uh, obviously slowing down now to keep the distance. I think uh, now it's asking me for to keep the hands on the wheel. So it's about every 10 to 15 seconds where it's asking me that. Um, going into a bit of a foggy area here. Let's see, uh, it doesn't obviously read street lamps. Will it lose it? Nope, it maintained the lanes through that intersection. A lot of it, a lot of uh, lane keeping won't do that as soon as you get through an intersection. So now it's beeping me, telling me to put my hands back on the wheel, turn that torque sensor again. Uh, so I don't have my hands on the wheel. It's actually doing a pretty good job. It does tend to, uh, just trying to get a perspective here. I thought it was ping-ponging a little bit, but it seems to have stabilized a bit. I find that it might hug the, the, the center line a little bit more than I would in normal driving, but everybody's slightly different. Certainly not crossing the line and not going over it. Um, we're going on a fairly straight route, so and that's ideally where these lane keeping and adaptive cruise systems are good for is when you're on the highway and you're not really doing tight turns and this kind of stuff. You're in fairly open areas that the traffic moves and it's basically to help you and provide a relaxing drive. So this seems to work pretty good um, and a really nice, quiet, comfortable, um, and uh, pre this is a premier environment, of course, being in the platinum trim, but uh, yeah, they, they've done a good now, one handy feature of this F-150 that now that I've had it for, I'm driving around for a couple of weeks, is I get to do some spring cleaning. Gotta love it, man. Take advantage of it while you got it. So this thing doesn't have a huge bed. It's a five and a half foot bed, but definitely can hold about 2,000, 2,200 pounds. And I'm just bringing some stuff here to my recycling center slash dump. I got a whole bunch of stuff that I'm going to start spring cleaning. So, man, it's a good time of year to have the F-150 and they are super handy when it comes with, uh, when it comes to getting rid of stuff, having a pickup truck, because that's one thing I do miss. We used to have a minivan years and years ago and they came in handy taking stuff to the dump. So this is uh, even better. Now, one thing you got to love about the Ford is the onboard scales here. And if I just go to that, I'm going to touch it with a good finger here and go to the... Oh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted the onboard scales. There we go. Uh, vehicle must be in park. Okay, let's put it in park. I'm at a light. Let's continue. So, again, it tells you what the load is. And, uh, of course, i got all this stuff that I'm taking to the dump here into the recycle center. So, uh, it's nice to know uh, what your limits are in the vehicle. And it's super, super handy. All right, so sorry for the reflection here, um, but 
I'll zoom in. So as you can see, it started at 9% steady charge. It spun up to 119 kilowatts. Um, I did have to plug it in a second time. The first time I plugged it in, it said connection error. And I hear that that's fairly standard with a lot of these um, electrified Canada ones. So you got to try it a couple of times, nice and slow. But now it's starting to spin up. It's uh, at 119. The battery was uh, at a good temperature, mid-range on the temperature scale. And uh, we'll see if this thing peaks up a little bit more between 10 and 20. It's starting to creep to 120. See how it goes, but uh, that's pretty good. Um, and temp again, temperatures out here are about uh, 12 degrees Celsius. So it's not super warm, but we've got the sun out and um, it looks pretty good. I'll, let's see what it looks like on the inside of the car. All right, this was, shows inside the car. One comment that I've heard from some users is they don't show the amount of kilowatts that are coming into the vehicle. Um, on the display here, you have to go look at the charging station. So it would be nice if, some, if Ford put something here. There's lots of room. Uh, you can see it's set for 90%. That it'll tell me it'll get to 90% at 1029, which is about uh, an hour from now. A little bit more than an hour from now. I'm not going to 90% um, at this point. If I was road tripping, I would go to 80. And um, what time I started here... Um, which is incorrect. It's not 12 a.m. on Monday, so I'm not sure where that's coming from, but it's already at 13% and climbing. If I look over to the screen here, uh, again, it tells me my start charging time, which is accurate, 917, where it ended to get the 90. I'm not going to 90. Um, and then you can, of course, look at changing the, uh, the charging limits if you want here and doing different things, charging locations, whatever. So uh, even in here, it doesn't tell you what you're pulling. It just shows the uh, percentages. So it would be nice if Ford um, did decide to do that um, because it would be beneficial for the drivers to um, to be able to see that rating here as well if you didn't want to go stand outside in a charging station. Um, that's for sure. So now I am plugged into a 350 watt, uh, kilo, 350 kilowatt CCS fast charger and if I walk around here you'll be able to see that I'm the only one here so there's four stations three others are 150s for CCS and 50 there's a 50 Chatamo thrown in the mix so a couple of 150s there and 150 50 at a 150 50 Chatamo here and then the 350 one is this one so I'm all by myself so if there is the amount of power ready to send this vehicle from the highest powered uh, charger here it should be this one and i should be getting it i'm just about to unplug it but as you can see i've gone 20 minutes uh 42 kilowatt hours power delivered at 127 128 so it does tend to climb a bit um, as it gets warmer which is nice nice to see that steady state of uh, charging uh, which is pretty good 20 minutes to get almost half uh, back of range uh, 30 30 some odd percent 35 percent or so uh, not bad, not bad. So I'm going to unplug because I don't need any more. I'm going to home charge later on, but I just wanted to check out the fast charging. And uh, I'll be doing some road tripping next week in this, so I'll definitely be relying on uh, either IVs or Electrify uh, Canada's to get me around. Just doing a road trip on this F-150 Lightning here because I've had it for a couple of weeks. And I know I've got a little segment about uh, charging that I tried. Uh, but I thought I, you know, I have to plug it in anyway in this long road trip because I'm going about 400 kilometers each way. And, and I'm at Electrify Canada station. And interesting where I started with about um, 30, just had to look, 26% state of charge at about 125 kilowatts. It was pulling in at 54, it's up to 131 kilowatts. So I guess the battery just needed to warm up a bit. It was not cool, but not hot. Um, so it ramped up a bit and it's, uh, one thing I like about the Fords is that it, it basically keeps that peak level of whatever it'll pull max and it just keeps pulling it. You know, I started at 26% and I'm at 54% and it's still pulling 131. So it doesn't, you don't get this step down approach. And what that means is that the overall charging curves are pretty good on this. Now this is the extended range, so it's a big battery. You know, it's going to take a lot of juice. I'm only going to go probably to 70%. I don't need to go too too high because i'm going to hit this one on the way back in a couple of days as i come back home and top up a little bit just to get home but it just goes to show you that you know the oems are improving the overall charging curves so it's not just the peak rates it's that overall curve that uh, makes a difference and um, 
you know, have to admit, my last couple of experiences at Electrify Canada have been pretty pleasant here. Um, so I'm glad to see that they're, uh, you know, working on their systems, getting things going. I haven't experienced any down products uh, in the last couple of stops that I've done. So uh, good on them. And uh, again, good on the F-150. It's a great road tripping vehicle. My goodness, it's so comfortable and quiet. Just set the blue cruise on and off I go. But uh, anyway, hope the, you get a little bit of good information out of this part. All right, so I just did a good run on this F-150 from uh, my home in Caledon to Windsor and back. And uh, today I just did one trip. I just uh, w left Windsor at 94%, came all the way home, and with, uh, what's my percentage of batteries? 9% left. So Kyle, you'd be proud of me running it down here with an uh, estimated range of 35 kilometers left. And I started at uh, 458 and drove 355 kilometers. And most of that driving was highway at about 115, 116 kilometers an hour, pretty well steady. So, you know, averaging about 30 to 31 kilowatt hours per 100. Again, on the highway speeds, this is a big vehicle, a lot of air resistance. It's a big brick, a rounded brick basically. So it's going to be up there. But I did in the city yes, uh, this yesterday and today, I got it down to 19. Uh, kilowatt hours per 100. So uh, if you know in city driving, this is actually going to do pretty good with the uh, with the regen. But uh, anyway, uh, no problem getting home. I trusted the computer. It told me that I was going to get home with still some charge. Obviously, some low battery warnings, but nothing really to to worry about. Um, quite fine. So uh, good job on Ford again. It's a very comfortable ride, and this is a great long distance driver as far as comfort goes and cruising, and uh, uh, just runs really really nice. So I hope folks you've enjoyed all that info, especially some of the charging stuff. Um, some of the videos I've seen uh, on the Ford charging, some of them do have actually gone over the stated peak rate of 150. I couldn't achieve those results. And again, sometimes it does depend on the charger that you're plugged into and different circumstances. But overall, you know, a pretty good uh, truck to road trip in for sure. Now, let me give you some of my comments of spending a couple of weeks with this. You know, you saw me use it to take some stuff to the dump, clean up the basement a bit. I've taken people out on this thing. Um, I've done shopping, grocery shopping, filled up the front with uh, grocery bags, that kind of stuff. And a lot of errands and running around and that long road trip to Windsor and back, which really put this thing through the paces as far as just drivability, usability, if efficiencies to a point, range, that kind of stuff, just to see how it would fare. I tell you, though, getting into southwestern Ontario, you are in pickup truck country. Like every third vehicle there is a pickup truck. Uh, a lot of farms, we have a lot of agriculture, a lot of uh, manufacturing, a lot of contract trades, things like that. So it's a very popular uh, automotive uh, area for pickup trucks. And you get into Windsor, of course, home of Ford and Chrysler and some of the other folks. So there's a lot of pickup trucks. And I tell you, I got a lot of people staring and asking about this truck, especially when I parked and I popped the front open and they go, where's the engine? It's a great conversation starter. And a lot of people are super impressed with this truck, even if they're petrol heads, right? If they're people that are diehard pickup truck fans and they'll never, they would never have thought electrification. When they start learning a little bit about this, man, does it turn heads. And it also starts forming different opinions on electrification. I excuse the bird noise, but that's the way it is early morning here in suburbia. So that's one of the takeaways that I got from my time spending with this is I had a lot of people come up to me and ask questions and ask, look at the truck because they couldn't figure out, you know, one guy thought this was a lightning. He says, is that the 6.8 twin turbo version or whatever? And I'm going, or the supercharge? And I'm saying, no, this doesn't supercharge it fast charges. No, the engine. I mean, I said, no, it doesn't have an engine. I didn't realize that it was electric because of course Ford has brought back the Lightning nameplate, namesake from their previous uh, fast, uh, you know, supercharged pickup truck, right? For their racing type division or, or an SRT, I think it might've been part of. So it's a, it definitely is a conversation starter and it's, it's turning conversations uh, and you were having conversations with people that are in sectors that normally wouldn't have looked at electrification. And again, that's why I picked this as my vehicle of the year last year. Uh, and it's one of my tipping points in my EV 101 talk as far as how the market has shifted even more toward electrification because of what Ford has done with this specific pickup truck. Now I know the GM Silverados, the Dodge Rams, and all these other ones are going to be good trucks. There's no doubt in my mind, but this is the first and Ford has the biggest market share, right? With, you know, 45 years being the number one vehicle the Ford F50 uh, in the planet. I think last year they came number two 
under the Toyota Corolla, but it wasn't by much. So this is an extremely popular machine for a price point that's not cheap, right? I might have take, uh, talked about some pricing in my old video there, but just to recap, I have the platinum version. It's got everything except the massage seats on it, um, and it's 1100 111000 almost $112,000. That's a lot of money, folks. It's a big chunk of money. The base, the minimum you can spec you can buy right now in Canada or order is the Lariat, uh, sorry, the XLT spec, and it starts at 85000 It starts at 85000 No rebates, no incentives. If that's what the standard range pack, you add up to, to the extended range, you're into 95000 So So 100000 to get into it is a lot of money. Now I know it's not uncommon to get pickup trucks and to get their price points in the 75 to 80K range. I get it. I talk to a lot of owners and they say, you know, you add some stuff, you get it extended, whatever. You, you start getting up into that 80, 85. So it's not a huge pill to swallow if you're looking at the XLT trim with the extended battery. If I was using this just as work and my, my work area was around the city, I wouldn't look at the extended battery pack. But if I'm going to look to haul, to, to do some part-time towing, or some full-time towing with a smaller trailer or a lot more driving that I would look at the extended battery pack, which is $10,000 more Canadian, which is well worth that investment. Again, the 98 kilowatt hours for the standard, 131 hours for uh, 131 kilowatt hours for the extended battery pack. And remember, these are this is a big pack. So when I talked about fast charging earlier, you've got to give yourself some time to get from 10 to 80 percent. It's a lot of juice this pack has to take in. You know, when folks are looking at the Rivians and like the GMC Hummers and these vehicles that have, you know, 140, you know, 130, 140, 150, 200 kilowatt packs, boy, it takes a long time to get juice into those with the current uh, technologies that we have today. So this is going to take a little longer, but it's a big pack and gives you gives you good range out of that. So that, though, that was my overall impression as far as the experiences with this truck. As I said a couple times on the video, the driving was just such a joy. You know, I'm not a pickup truck person, never have owned one. Uh, I've driven one, pickups lots of times for various applications, but never really for an extended amount of time that I have for the last couple of weeks. And I tell you, I'm, I would really consider getting one of these. Now, I don't need one. I can't fit it into my garage as you can see i'm parked in front of i have to run the charger underneath the garage door to get to this truck park close because uh, so it can reach uh, for my home charging uh, but it's doable and you know it takes up half the driveway three quarters of the driveway length here but it's a doable situation and boy the versatility and having the ability to throw stuff in the bed to have that huge lockable sealable front element to put stuff in and then have a super cab uh, as well, crew cab here uh, to hold five people very, very comfortably. You know, I had four uh, driving around for a while and everybody was very comfortable, lots of room, no squeaks, rattles, fit and finish is excellent. Everything that Ford has done with this truck, they've just poured their, uh, their blood, sweat and tears into it and they've done a phenomenal job. And I think if there's anything you can take away from this review, is the assurance that, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're always gonna potentially get some problems with vehicles, no matter who they are and how well they're built. But Ford knows their audience. They know their customers. They put everything that their customers want and more in this, right, with some of the features being electrified and, and, and the other features, of course. So I would encourage you, if you're seriously interested in getting an electrified pickup truck, to look at the F-150. It might take a while to get, and you might have to pay 10, 15, 20,000 more than you normally would for a truck of the same type of outfit and, and characteristics that you need, but it would be well, well worth it. And when I talk about numbers, I'm gonna close up this review with some numbers. Yes, it's a high price point, but if I look at a comparable XLT, if I, tr if I just look at XLT trims as I talked about, look at how, much, uh, how, how many miles of range an XLT gas version gets, and they get about 460 mile ranges, uh, about 20 MPG on average on a 23 gallon tank. If I look at the Lightning in a uh, standard or um, extended range variant, I can get 230 miles on the standard range and 320 miles on the long range. So I'm getting pretty close on that long range. If I look at charging costs um, associated with that, the average DC fast charge, so road tripping DC fast charging costs, is going to be between 10 to $30 USD, or let's say 15 to $40 Canadian. If I were to get this thing like down to 5% and want to go to 90, 95, it's probably going to cost me 35 to $40 at a fast charger station. Home charging though, that's a different story, right? Because home charging is so cheap. 
So if I look at averaging about 20,000 kilometers a year in, in driving for this, and 90% of my charging is done at home, so I, I, I use it for work, I use it for around town, I use it for occasional fast charging if I have to go out of town, let's say in a project or something, you know, uh, maybe 10% uh, of that uh, mileage might be out of town. And you could play around with your own numbers to figure this out, folks, but I just took some generic numbers. So if I 90% charge at home, 10% charge, I would get a um, savings of about $3,500 a year in fuel costs, in, in petrol gas costs, because our electricity here is so cheap and off-peak overnight is, is, is so relatively cheap compared to a lot of other regions. And that means that I'm at about a, a ROI on savings for that difference in cost, looking at an XLT gas version versus looking at a uh, F-150 um, uh, XLT version as well, lightning. Um, I am at, uh, a, like I said, a savings of about, sorry, about, of about $2,700 to $2,800 a year, depending on fuel prices. I used a, a buck fifty a liter as my calculation here, but it's been going up and down. So almost three grand a year for savings, and that would give you a return on that investment of about seven years. More driving is going to give you a little less. L less driving is going to give you a little more, and that's based on getting a Lariat ICE a V version at about $75,000 MSRP. P Canadian versus the XLT extended at 95,000, uh, the XLT Lightning extended at extended range at 95,000 MSRP. So about a $20,000 difference. I'm going to make that up in about seven years. Most guys that have trucks keep them for a long time. They use and abuse them, and they're in the family uh, for uh, you know years and years and years. And we all know that EVs will last a long time. The batteries, th there's no end in sight as far as you know, what battery, how long they will really last because they're still a young industry, but the most analysts and the market, the automotive manufacturers predict 12 to 15 years that these battery packs will last, um, that they'll still give you some usable range out of that. And then again, there are repair shops uh, when they're out of warranty, there are, they have the ability to go fix these uh, either through the manufacturer or through independent shops that can open the battery, replace the bad cells that are, that are uh, uh, causing issues and put the battery back together without having to spend 25, 30, 45,000, whatever, on a new battery pack that you don't need to replace, that you can just fix that pointed problem with maybe a couple of thousand dollars, right? If your water pump goes on your engine, you don't replace your engine, right? You fix the water pump. Well, it's the same thing with a battery pack. You can find the expertise and more and more businesses are spinning up now to, to tackle that marketplace, including the OEMs, which will be able to offer uh, fixed services, you know, at a charged rate, right? It's just the business is so young, there's not a lot of stuff coming back as most EVs are still on the road. So when you look at the financial analysis of this, this makes great sense and I encourage you to look at it again. Um, as I mentioned, this is just such a phenomenal vehicle to drive. Um, everybody that's been in this car has just commented on how smooth, how quiet it is, how comfortable it is for a pickup truck, right? It is a pickup truck. It's big. You sit high. It's, you got to think about parking where you're going to park, right? It took me a little bit of practice to figure out how to park uh, properly, give myself more room. But it's a big truck, uh, but it's got a lot of capabilities. So again, I want to thank Ford Canada for allowing me the use of this truck for a couple of weeks. It was really nice of them to let me extend the use of this so I could really get a good feel and get a comfort level for this. And I'm even more excited about the Ford F-150 Lightning and potentially the other pickup trucks that are coming down the line because I, I'm, I'm confident that OEMs are going doing the right thing. They're listening to their... Um, their loyal base of uh, people that buy those kind of products and making sure they don't uh, uh, you know, do things to turn that base off of their product to look elsewhere. But this has definitely set the bar. It's a high bar. It's a fantastic product. So definitely check out the Ford 150. Go visit your local dealer. Uh, again, if you're in Ontario, you can go check Bolton, those guys out there. But uh, it's just a phenomenal truck. So again, certainly encourage you to look at it and, uh, and check it out. Boy, I tell you, Maybe my next vehicle might be a pickup truck. I don't need one now, but boy, I would seriously consider this. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed all those rambling ons. And uh, that's it for this episode. All my contact information and everything is coming up at the end here. So you can check all that out. If you're interested in sponsoring me on Patreon, you can see some of the information there. Well, I always want to thank my Patreon supporters for what they do and for allowing me uh, the use, uh, you know, to help uh, offset my costs, a lot of costs that I put into this. Uh, I've got a lot of more cars coming, folks. This is a busy season for me. I think I've got about seven cars within the next 
two and a half months. I've almost got a car every week now. <laughs> so I have a lot of cars. I'm gonna have another car coming up and that's going to be for an extended period of time too. Unprecedented, I'm getting one for three weeks this time. I'm very excited about that. So stay tuned for some more stuff coming in. Until the next episode, everybody stay safe. I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.